event. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. As Sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. You, so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy, Buy our, our merch. Indeed. The, uh, here we go. Here's another band we've never heard of. This is Chicago. I guess the name of the song is 25 or 6 to 4. I thought he was asking us for two songs, or like, I thought he was asking us to choose between 25 and 6 to 4. Oh, you know is saying? that what but he's the, doing? No, that's not it, because literally that's the name of the song. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Okay, so this, this, uh, Chicago, I'm pretty sure Chicago is the name of the band itself. You got the lyrics? I'm pulling them up right now. Okay, so this, the name of this band is Chicago. This is brought to you by Agents of the Arpeggio. Really shout out to the big homie, um, Middle, Middle Earth. Earth. Um, Who made it all possible. Actually, actually, Middle Earth, we've been... Yeah. Boom, 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 Shout boom. out to Middle Earth. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, yes, and so this... Look, guys, these are these are 25 or 2, 6 to 4 a.m. I don't know what that means. Um, but, guys, there are multiple ways to get your song re songs reviewed. These guys are really creative. Middle Earth, actually went into the village discord and just i don't know how he decisioned on who who he selected but i know who got to be so lucky these are not his selections like directly these are um selections for um this is the only one the that vision. he put on the list for this himself for I believe. himself right okay well hopefully it was better than the previous song inshallah but if it's not you know we'll tell you the truth here it is guys chicago let's go
somebody get that man! On fire! Drummers wearing his grandmother's nightgown. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the village, bitches. This we have the funniest, <laughs> the funniest commenters of all time. He said, he said he's wearing his mom's nightgown. His Holy grandmother's. Moly. Holy moly! This <clears throat> when was this? This has got to be super old. 1970. Yeah. Oh, we we did. We just got blocked again, bro. Just got blocked again. Hey, the slightest cuss. <laughs> We're still I here. Hate people. No. We're still here. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> okay, so that one got blocked too. <clears throat> All right, so we gotta wait till the homies. We gotta wait till the homies come back. Um, damn. So that's that's two of them. That didn't even look. That looked like some random guy too. <clears throat> That did that video. How mm -hmm. holy moly! How the hell did that get blocked? That's terrible. Mm, look, well, look. This is what everybody's seeing right now. Stream suspended for policy saw violations. Saw that one coming. I'm waiting. Uh, it's <laughs> we're still suspended. I'm waiting for for uh, for them to copyright strike us and say, hey. Oh, you, I am you guys, too. You guys, you've been suspended been, too many times. Yeah, you've been suspended too many times. Um, that might have been. That might have been what. The, the official, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still talking to the homies, though. <laughs> but uh, These yeah, record labels need to get up with the times. It it hasn't it hasn't caught that it hasn't come back yet. I don't know. Holy moly, they're they're really I mean, taking it serious this time. Uh, can you hear me, Zombie Holic? Zombie Holic, can you hear me? Somebody type twenty two if you can hear me in the stream. Okay, we're back. 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 Okay, guys. So to the uninitiated, that happens because we play the thing straight through and we don't um, we don't <coughs> cut it up like most reactors. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, they demonetize you. Um, and if the label really wants to be crazy, they'll just they'll just block you. Now because we're doing a live stream. They block the stream, they suspend the stream, whatever, whatever. But we're going to keep going at it until um, they they kill us. So there's that. Okay. So this song is, I'm very happy that it was juxtaposed from the previous song. So the previous song was a prog. Um, okay, let me say this. Instrumentally speaking, the previous song was way more complex than this song. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as like the heart and soul of the song, like there's no comparison. Like no. this song and this band, but that whole that progression, the da 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 da, and the da 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 da, it sounds familiar. And I don't know if that's like a, a template that was just popular in the '70s, 
Although this was the beginning of the it 70s. It didn't sound at all familiar to me. This was the beginning of the 70s. And like this kind of music, I kind of heard a little bit of, uh, what's his name? Ozzy in there. Da, 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 da. You know, like, but mm-hmm. Ozzy, Ozzy's obviously a little bit more crazy in his aesthetic in the way. Mm-hmm. But I could definitely see that these guys were influential. I can't believe I'm, I can't believe nobody's talked to us. The name of this band is Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, for me, it was like, <laughs> There seemed to be a lot more instruments going on at the same time. And stuff didn't sound familiar to me. Um, And the way that they were moving. Okay, so again, you guys know my story. My parents were very strict Christians. We didn't have music growing up. Well, we went to, it was either Storyland or it was, you know, Disney or something like that. And they had like these big stuffed animals. I think it must've been Storyland. They looked like giant stuffed animals, but they were like, move. they moved themselves. They were supposed to look like the Beatles, but not like actual real people. It was supposed to look like puppet versions. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And the way that they were moving (laughs) was like very similar to the way this guy was moving in this. And I wonder if it was kind of, when were the Beatles? The 60s, right? Okay, so the time period is kind of similar. So... Because, you know, like, the way that they were... Like, they move differently than when, when we see bands now. Bands now do different things because of whoever influences them. Um, but I liked the sound of it. It had a cool sort of sound to it. And there are certain songs, especially like this. And I know people are, like, making cracks about their clothes and stuff like that. Oh, but yeah. I actually... I like... The clothes are very interesting looking and they're very dated to that time period. Yeah. And I, I just... I can very much appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, I, I can rock with that. I and do, I like the sound of it. I do, I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that for sure. Like just that retro feel. Yeah, I can't hear something like this without thinking of my mom. Well, it's just crazy to me. Just like looking, looking at it, it's like I'm sure looking at these dudes, like when it came out, like these dudes were like the coolest thing in the world. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. And now it's like, yo, that's just corny as hell. It's just so funny to me, like how. Hmm how we figure out what's cool, what isn't cool. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. what's stylish, what isn't stylish. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have much to do with the song, but it's just, it's just such an interesting, fascinating thing. And like, when, I don't think we realized the miracle of videotape. No. Yeah. That is miraculous. You're taking a moment in time with real authentic human beings. And you're actually looking at the past in the present. Yep. And then you get to manipulate it. You can fast forward it. You can slow it down. You can. It's it's mind boggling. Like the stuff that we take for granted. It's so and true. Like the implications of what it means. Like mm-hmm. some of the people in the who originally heard that song are probably dead. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe some folks in that oh, audience for are sure. probably for dead. Sure. Maybe some folks in the band pass. It. It's just. It's just. It's a really crazy kind of mind thing to 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 watch something and have that understanding that when that was being taped that guy was like feeling that in that moment he Mm -hmm. was having a moment yeah he he was and i had no idea who that guy was and now i'm seeing him in this like crazy intimate moment between himself and his instrument and it's just like it's mind blowing. It's like holy shit. Mm-hmm. That's such a gift that we have even that to look at. Like we take so much of this shit for granted. But oh, I would like to know how long he practices <laughs> per day, or Ooh, how that long guy? he did. Yeah. Well, the solo wasn't really that. It like, wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't really that intricate. But he. But that was my point. That's why I loved it so much. Was because he was feeling it. Whereas in the other song, it just. I'm sorry, but, but and, and again, it's kind of not fair to compare because the other song was a. Uh, was a studio version mm-hmm. this song was a live song you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so so when a song is live you can know like there was this one band our least favorite band in the entire history of our song of our of our channel and like they did a live type video and there was just no they were just like you know they hit every note perfectly and what i just nah. mm-hmm. so like this song right here it's like just feeling it and and feeling what he does even the vocalist the way that the vocalist was doing it like and again the other vocalist was better as far mm-hmm. as his technicals go but 
that's the thing about rock music is it's got to move you. And like this song is not like a metal song. The previous song was a metal song. Mm -hmm. This song is just what they call hard rock. And this song moved me a lot more than what the other. And it's interesting because it looks to me like the song is just about like being around in the morning and writing, writing music. But for some reason, that had more feeling than the previous song, which was talking about politics, which generally should be an easy, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? It yeah. should be a pretty easy thing yeah. to get angry or emotional about. But So what what did 25 or 624 mean? I, I'm still confused. Um, scroll up. So it says, waiting for the break of day, searching for something to say. We always say like the first line controls the song. Mm-hmm. Flashing lights against the sky. I gave up. I closed my eyes. Sitting cross-legged on the floor. 25 or 6 to 4. Maybe that's um, uh, what time of night it is. Somebody somebody put a somebody put a thing up there in the in the chat, and I, 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 I shared it because I think that they're right. He said something about, like, he's talking about time or something like that. So I just think that's, like, literally the time on the clock when they were writing. Look, see right there, 3.25 a.m. before 4 a.m. So, 3 o'clock in the morning. So, 25 or 6 to 4. Yeah. Oh. So, 3.25 or 3, what? That would be 3.54, right? 6 minutes to 4 o'clock. 25 or 26 minutes before 4. Yeah. 25, 25 or, 20, or 6 to, to 4. four. Yeah. Oh, I see. So just what time of night it is. Yeah. 3.35, whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's a prequel to Tools 46 and 2. That is all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like Okay. Yeah. So, so like, you know, it just looks like he's having a hard time. <laughs> yeah. Scroll up he has with, to write a song, right? That's what it is. He has to write a song. And record and labels telling him you got to write a song. Nothing's and coming. block. Yeah. And so then he's wondering, staring blindly into space, but getting up to splash so my face. But he was so much more emotional and soulish in this song than the previous song, which was talking about politics. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't understand about... I, I just feel like really, really, really mega talented people. It, it's almost like we watched this yesterday, right? Where Kevin Samuels was doing a breakdown and he was pretty much right in his ideas. But there was one subtle thing that he missed... That was major. That was massive. Mm -hmm. And, be, but because he's so analytical, he was seeing her inconsistencies, but he wasn't putting together what was underneath the inconsistency. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the soul and the heart of this woman. So th this guy is like a, he's like a YouTube counselor. And I don't suggest you go to him because he's, he had, generally has negative messaging towards women, but, um, it, it, he's entertaining nonetheless it's 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 entertaining but but the, like that's the difference like he was able to technically break everything down mm -hmm. and you know logically explain it but he missed the entire emotional side of the situation so musically speaking that happens a lot where you have people who are just like technically gifted and completely amazing and then at the same time Mm -hmm. They miss out on yeah. what might be obvious to other people. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this guy is writing about writer's block. And <laughs> so funny, right? Yeah, it, it's make a song about writer's block. So then you don't have a writer's block. I almost wonder to myself, like if I've ever really experienced writer's block and I probably have, but because I'm not under pressure to produce anything by X time, I just go, oh, I'll just leave it alone and do something else. I'll play Fortnite, I'll play football, I'll play ping pong, I'll do X, Y, Z. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so it's not as, you know, it's not as urgent. But I can, can you imagine if like you're an artist and music just came to you and it just flowed through you and then you sold a couple records and everybody's like, ah, then you get a record deal and everybody thinks you're great. And then the record label goes, great. We need another one by October 15th. Then you get hit with writer's block. Holy, can you imagine like that adds a completely oh, different layer? Yeah. And then you get the whole thing of like, am I doing this for the art or am I just doing this because I have a date and I get rushed and what exactly. does that mean about my art? Exactly. Does it mean I'm a sell? I mean, you know, that is what I love about YouTube, though. 
What about is it? you can you can produce your own stuff, your own music, and you can put yourself out there on Spotify and all these different places, and people can find you, and then you can right. become the next big thing without ever having to go through a label that's going to pressure you in this way or that way. So happy birthday, Sean! Shout out to the big homie Sean. Sean is uh, Sean is little bro, mm -hmm. and he deserves one of these. Boop, 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 boop. Did it go off? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. I have, I have. Yeah, I usually hear something from here and I didn't hear anything. Yeah, I, I put it lower so people's eardrums. Oh, we don't destroyed. have to say RIP ears. <laughs> yeah, RIP ears. Um, staring blindly into space, getting up to splash my face, wanting just to stay awake, wondering how much I can take. Should I try to do some more? See, like the time keeps going. Yeah. And he's probably on some substances. Spinning room is sinking deep, searching for something to say, waiting for the break of day. So, I, I, I just could definitely see why. But they made such a great song out of it. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> irony of you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't come up with lyrics to a song. So you write a song about not being able to come up That's with lyrics to a song. And I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know what this is on their discography. Maybe it's like four people like it. But I, I think this could have been a big. This could have been a big song. Mm -hmm. What do you? The, yeah, I think Colin, it's. I've heard Colin Cowherd talk about these guys. Oh, really? Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. He, he said that they were like one of the best, like they've never had a bad record or something like that. No he, way. He said about them or this other band called no like the the, uh, the Eagles, I think it was. He said one of those guys, they like never had a bad song. Oh, it's probably because you you had it. You weren't yeah. talking into it. It was um, a big song in the seventies. Okay. Yeah, it, ha it had to have been. I could totally see that. Um, 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 um. When I look at the album cover, it's not what I thought this was gonna sound like. What happened? Uh, oh, that's overshadow Sean's opinion. I'll withhold judgment. I'm just putting it up there. As will I. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I think that I, I didn't expect it to sound like this, but I definitely, I'm always a fan of something that kind of has the hippie vibe to it. So um, this is going to get an 8.999. It's a 9. Scroll down, scroll down a little bit. Should I try to do some more? But what did you think about that guy with the solo, bro? That like that, it was ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. Like it wasn't. It went most, on for so long. Yeah, but it wasn't the most complex. So somebody said like, is well, he, I don't know if it's complex or not because I'm not a. Is he? Somebody said like, is he? At, well, I mean, you you know, like anyway, Momstein is like going all over the place. Like damn. Yeah. Okay. In the okay. Same okay. Kind okay of neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Sean used to tell me. Like, look, look, Vinny, if you stay in the same type of neighborhood, you got a very good ear for like melodic note, low note. Just do that, cause that's your... he had just shown me this crazy solo that he just came up. With. I was like, yo, show me how to do that. And he's like, well, just stay, just, just, just stay in that neighborhood, cause you write really good stuff in that little neighborhood. <laughs> and he's like, that's enough for you. <laughs> I, I mean, why? He, he was completely right, huh? Really? He's completely right. Oh yeah. You know Sean, like we played that. He, yeah. That that we actually played one of his songs on the channel. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. He yeah. Had, you, we had the desk or something. Yeah, yeah. He used to get annoyed with me when he would try to teach me guitar because I was always like doodling or doing. So you know how you like multitask and all that shit. And he was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. He's like, "I'm gonna give you all your money back." Just like, <laughs> like yeah, he, he was just very like passionate about the instrument. Yeah. So, like, he was trying to teach me like these regular scales and shit. And he would teach me one thing, and I'd say, oh, and I'd spend all night on it. And then, you know, like, the whole, because you know how I am. I'll just take the guitar and, like, play around with it while we're watching a movie or something. Like, mm -hmm. So I was coming into band practice, like, he was like, Rah! not band practice, but he was, you know, he was teaching me how to play. And, like, all, all the melody shit that I do, like, comes from those two specific moves. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It, it, it's just... It's just, you know, like he, he taught me like that, that kind of, and he'd tell me like, okay, if you get stuck, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Like, so once you figure out music theory, like you can, you can play yourself a little bit out of a slump because like he basically said, like he showed me oh, a couple of feel like you have to know the instrument really well. I don't know. I don't know. Cause he, cause it worked. Like he showed me a couple modes and he was like, okay. Like this is the one that you like because it was it featured a couple minor progressions. He's like, okay, so you're gonna write a lot of shit in there. So when you feel like you're getting too repetitive, just try these two or three. So he taught me another two or three. I learned them and completely forgot them because I oh I wow to stay in that one. Yeah, 
Yeah. So it, it's it, music writing is actually pretty complex, actually. It's actually super complex. But I really, really like the song. And I loved how much that this dude... I love that this dude... The guitarist, whoever he was, was really, really feeling his shit. Mm -hmm. But then the the whole like the trumpets and stuff, like yeah. is that the whole band? Is like, is there like eight nine people in this that's band? That's like a huge band. And then they and they did that stuff in the seventies, right, with the horns and all mm -hmm. that jazz. So I want to be checking out the comment section because I want to know like, it, it or was it just for that particular show? Yeah, you know, because sometimes they do that, like Metallica. Does yeah, that just have a couple extra people that. come in for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a nine dot one. And I gave it a nine. We were very close. Oh, you gave it a nine? Yeah. I went from 8.9 and then I bumped it to a nine. Yeah, Corey, it was a chromatic scale cut in half. Yeah, that's, the, yeah, exactly. Right, remember I said they, they yeah. cut in the, yeah, like, you just keep doing that shit, bro. It works. Okay. Uh, they use horns regularly and they do have a brass section. Holy moly. Wow. That's crazy. It just, it just really. So, like, hmm. Okay, so obviously these people are not around anymore. What do you mean? This is 1970. What do you mean they're not around? They could be around. Ozzy's We're been in around since 1970. That's 50 years. Are these people still around? 50 the years? The Rolling Stones have been around for like 60 years. Yeah. What are you talking they're still about? around? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Shout out to Overshadow Sean. Shout out to the homie. Wow. Um, I'd like to hear something from now. The horn section is a staple uh, They're rock and roll with horns. Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, interesting. Uh, Terry Kath died. See, one of them died. Subhanallah. Yeah, that's too bad. And they're not together anymore. All right, um, nine got two. Nine. Really good song. Then out. Sorry, out. Gone.